soaring in the mountains with winds aloft blowing over 70 knots. How would you rate this day as far as toughness? Oh, on the scale from 0 to 10, it's 10. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought. <laughs> I never thought I'd see lenticular clouds from a sailplane. This was the culmination of our mountain flying course with Jason Miller from the Finer Points of Flying. We filmed a multi-part series. Please check out the description for other episodes. This experience meant a lot to me, as soaring is how I started flying. So this is the airplane I did my very first solo in. It's the Schweitzer 233. Oh, you've flown it before? Yeah, but I haven't flown one since 1996. But it looks exactly the same. I remember it so well. This episode will focus on an introduction to gliding, as many of the pilots taking the course had not done any soaring before. Some added value to this lesson came in the form of crazy high winds that day. We actually had to tuck inside the workshop for the lecture, so our film crew could capture clean sound without wind noise. I've heard we can expect very different roll rates from the gliders than we're used to from a powered aircraft just because the wingspan. That's absolutely right. Does that change the way that you fly that aircraft? No. With the exception of you'll need more rudder. We always, gliders, we use rudder because of the adverse yaw. Your feet are always dancing. Okay. Good practice. Yeah. Yeah, we tend to forget about that. We're just so used to doing it. I've heard that glider pilots transitioning to powered can be a bit heavy on the rudder. So that, That's been my experience. We don't think we're heavy. We just think we're, we're, the we're controlling it. <laughs> <laughs> they use them. Lenny's all around. Let me see the clouds. Yeah, they're beautiful. I've never seen it so textbook. Lenticular clouds out there. The wind was so strong that we got to see a real-world illustration of textbook mountain wave conditions that day. Lenticular clouds are a key feature of mountain wave. They're shaped sort of like lenses, but what's unique about them is that they're stationary despite very strong winds. Google lenticular UFO and prepare to have your mind blown if you haven't seen these things before. It's, it's rather a nice illustration today. And what happens very commonly with wave, you'll have a lenticular. This picture at the right is actually a wave going on over downtown Reno. On the leading edge of the cloud, it's bright in this picture, sun shining on it. That's where air is going up in the undulation. Wave could be mixed up with thermals, so you've got this undulation pattern and the rotor pattern going on, and a thermal comes up underneath and it gets pulled into the rotor. So are we going to catch any ridge lift in here during the tow, or which way is the wind now? It's that way, right? Yeah, yeah from the southwest. So are we, are we in kind of a downdraft right now here? Well, we're not in a downdraft, we're just in turbulence. Yeah. Lots of it. The thermals that normally would take us up, they are ripped apart by the wind. Yeah. And that's what makes it so turbulent. Right. You can't hardly stay in it. No. The mountains push the air up and down as the wind blows over them. When you've got ridges in the mountains, you've got the sun shining more on one side than the other. The air will go up on that side and down on the uh, unheated side. Holy well, God. yeah, so he just got an updraft there, eh? Now we're catching it? Yep. Oh, Good stuff that's tough. We're working hard on those controls. Yeah, we're going to let him go here. OK? Yep. So there's not much hope for any kind of thermally, right? And then when I get a little higher, I'll let you fly it, okay? Yep. If you want to climb, you can go where the thermals are, where glider pilots go, and a strong thermal that may be giving you an extra thousand feet per minute. But you'll probably be having to fly 60 degrees a bank to stay in it. I don't see any traffic. We look at traffic. Look above you. Way above? The blue and yellow one? There it is, yep. Where? Right oh, yeah, yeah. On the clock high, General. Tally ho! We find with wind like we have today, it can be going up over a ridge and down the other side, and then it'll bounce back up again, and it's a smooth stream of air. So from our perspective, if we're, if we're flying the ridge line and we find ourselves in descending air, moving leeward a little bit, getting so off the ridge, downwind, yes. we should find the bounce up. Yes. Okay. And, and whatever happens, downwind you will get somewhere quicker than upwind. It might be upwind you want to go to. <laughs> right. <laughs> Underneath, where the air is up, closer to the ground, you can get very turbulent stirring going on. Rotor clouds happen, clear rolling air underneath. 
that can be very, very rough. But if you go to the windward side of the rotor, that's where it's going up. And you've got a really rough ride, but it's going up really fast. There may be another 2,000 feet per minute that you're getting. Yeah, we're getting a pretty good rate of climb there, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Go, go right up. I'm surprised. I didn't expect to have a kind of consistent thermal like that on day like I couldn't do it last time with uh, Tom, but now we're doing good. What altitude did we get let up go at? Oh, 87 or so. So we're heading up to almost 10 now. 10, or, yeah. Wow. So we just gained almost 1,300 feet, just like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I'm proud to have a Stratus 2S being provided by ForeFlight as the lead prize this month. Visit flightchops.com to win. Wave in particular, you recognize it by being really smooth. There's an old adage that lift is where you find it. So you, know, you, you, look, you just have to look around and, and when you're in it, you slow down so that you spend more time in it. Good job. So what's your stall speed in this girl? Oh, but, well, the book says 36, but it's more like 40, 38. Maybe this one down a bit. Yeah, so we're kind of hanging in there just below stall, just flying nice and slow, but we're thermaling, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fire over there, see it? That smoke that, that way? Okay, look right over the nose. There it is. Yeah, we actually saw it when it was smaller yesterday, but I guess it's gotten quite a bit bigger since. Yeah. Yeah, that's intense. We saw it as a little, like it looked like it was the size of a car when we saw it, but now that's quite a bit bigger. So now we've gained almost 2,000 feet. All right, I think that's about it, 10-5. So you can go ahead and fly now. Let's yeah. go ahead, you see Donner Lake? Do I, Donner Lake, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and cruise there. Go, go about 60, 55. Oh, so it gets slower. Okay, so we're not thermaling anymore. We're just gonna go straight ahead? Yeah. So I'm going for 65. 60, 55, 55, 60 is fine. Okay. Let's uh, turn left and see if we can find that thermal again. Should I slow down? This pond below you. Yep. Try to stay over that. Yeah, you're doing a really good job staying in it when you were in it. And I've got lots of downdraft now. Down, down a little too. And now turn left. Uh, we're still in the sink here. Oops. Yeah, we're straight, straight now. Straight. We're in the sink right now. Yes, we are. We're really going down now. So keep going straight. Yeah. We'll find it again here. So I'm holding 50. Yeah, it's good. Am I might get thermaling get slower? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So that's no good. So let's turn right and go to those rocks down there. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. See if we can find it there. So we lost 1,500 feet since I've been flying? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's the type of weather we are in now. Yeah. Would you speak to maybe a, a pilot's survival kit for encountering rotor? It's very, very valuable to have done some aerobatics. You get upside down, you've been there before, and you know the way out of being upside down. Wake turbulence, for instance, if you get tipped up on edge, you want to pull back, make it into a turn, and the reason you're getting rolled is because you're in line with the air that's rolling. If you turn 90 degrees, you're suddenly going to have a, the air doing a pitch movement on you, and you can pitch the airplane much quicker than you can roll it. If you get tipped way up and you're not getting back, make a turn out of it. If you don't make a turn out of it, you're going to be falling knife edge because your wings aren't making enough vertical lift. Do you see the yellow glider anywhere? Negative. There he is, there he is. Right there. I go rolling, two zero with the left turn out. I don't see him. He's right there. Oh yeah, he's okay. So what do you want to do, head this way? Okay, keep going here for a minute. Let, let me have a second now. You've got it. Come on over here. Yeah. Flying with Jan was an honor. He's flown everything and is a true soaring master with thousands of hours logged in sailplanes. In part two, we'll learn more about his history and he'll show me how to land this non-powered aircraft in these crazy winds. Now we're climbing a little bit here. So you guys, that's a good lift again, eh? In part two, we're gonna learn about landing and judging glide angles when you only get one shot. 
Thanks again to the supporters on Patreon for making this possible. Every month we rotate in a really cool featured prize. Last month it was the True Aviator Steam Gauge watch from Shaden that Beth won, along with $1,000 worth of awesome stuff from the other sponsors. This month, Four Flight's providing a Stratus 2S. Please visit flightchops.com for a chance to win and keep your flight chops sharp. So after all the flying you've done is soaring, uh, probably part of your favorite way to fly. I love that it's just the sound of the wind. Yeah. Flying fighter is hard to beat. That's about, about the ultimate. Yeah, I would agree with that.